Brandis, the odds of a Chicago casino actually getting built rely on whether or not operators want to take a bet on coming to the city. This should have been the week when the long-awaited Chicago casino project finally got up and running. Monday was the initial deadline to submit proposals to develop the much-vaunted project, but after a few bidders appeared interested, the city pushed that deadline back to October. And joining us now to share their thoughts on the state of play are Richard Vallada, assistant business editor at the Las Vegas Review Journal, where he's covered the gaming industry in Las Vegas for many years. The Review Journal is owned by the family of Dr. Miriam Adelson, the majority shareholder of Las Vegas Sands Corp. And Bre Brendan Bussman, partner and director of government affairs for Las Vegas-based Global Market Advisors. That's a gaming, entertainment, sports, and hospitality consulting firm. Welcome both of you to Chicago Tonight. Thank so, you. So the Thanks city put out, on. it's good to have you, the city put out this request for bids a while ago. And so any operator that wants to win this bid, they, they have to adhere to a few things. First, it's one casino license. It would include slots at O'Hare and Midway airports. It would have to be a casino resort with up to 500 rooms. It would have to include bars, restaurants, entertainment venues, and have an architecturally significant design, among some other stipulations that Richard Villada quite simply... Why was this deadline pushed back uh, and why the interest so low at this point? Well, I think that the reason why it was pushed back was because there weren't enough qualified uh, bidders that, that came to the table. And I know that uh, Mayor Lightfoot uh, long ago said that she wanted to have some uh, interest from some of these Las Vegas companies. And as many people recognize, some of these Las Vegas companies have been doing it for a long time and they do it very well. And it, and it appears that these big Las Vegas companies have not thus far been interested in this. Brendan Bussman, do we know what companies are interested and are thinking about submitting a proposal? Well, I think that's probably the billion dollar question uh, to some extent. Um, you know, I know that uh, Rush Street has been rumored to to be in on it. Um, there have been other. This is Neil uh, Bloom's company correct, that operates correct. Uh, Rivers they, Casino. Yeah, that operates Rivers. Um, and then I think there have been some other regional player interest. Um, but as Rick mentioned, you know, uh, Wynn, MGM, that both uh, replied to the RFI, uh, said they weren't submitting, as well as Caesars uh, said they were bowing out as well. Richard Vallada, what are the factors they're considering here when, when they weigh their options and say, eh, maybe not a good bet? I think that uh, one of the problems that, uh, that the Chicago opportunity provides is uh, this high tax rate. And I, I understand that... Um, this has already been lowered once by the Illinois legislature. It was at the, uh, an actual tax rate of about 70% at one point in time. And that's been um, changed to 40% approximately. Once you, you get to the uh, that 40% level though, the profitability for the casino takes a big hit. And I think that's the main reason why most of these other, most of these Las Vegas companies are taking a pass because they have opportunities in other locations. Uh, just as an example, 6.75% is what the gaming tax here is here in Nevada. 40%, that's a pretty big leap. Wow, that, that, that is much lower than Chicago's tax rate. Uh, Brendan Bussman, is it just the tax rate or are there other factors that make Chicago kind of a risky bet for these operators? Well, you know, I, I think there's probably three things. Obviously, we've touched on the tax rate. Um, but also, as you, uh, you know, highlighted at the beginning of this, there's a laundry list of, of requirements, uh, including the 500 keys for the hotel, billion dollar investment, uh, iconic facility uh, being one in the requirements. But then you also have a very unknown market still. Um, you have a casino uh, to the north in Waukegan uh, that still hasn't been uh, named by the gaming board. Uh, and one to the south on the south side of Chicago. So you still have a market in flux, especially when it comes to local dollars. And then not to mention, there's a new Hard Rock Casino that opened just across the border in Indiana. Richard Vallada, is there anything that the Illinois legislature is going to have to consider changing about this proposal to attract more bidders? You mentioned it already tweaked the proposal once. Yeah, I, I don't know what, I don't know too much about what the Illinois legislature said. Uh, meeting schedule is in, in that I'll way. I'll just tell you that this is not on their agenda at this point. <laughs> I was, okay. Well, I, I think the, the big deal killer right now is that tax rate. I mean, we, we see tax rates that range from, you know, 10, 20, 25% in, in a lot of other jurisdictions. Um, and in Macau, they have a, a rate of approximately 39%. 
So that's like touching close to where, where Chicago wants to be. But the, the difference with, between Chicago and Macau is that they have volume. They have uh, a large market to uh, in all of mainland China and uh, a, a lot of the other uh, Asian countries that are that are nearby and certainly within an easy flight to get to to the uh, uh, what is now the, the largest gaming market in the world. And Macau, my producer was telling me earlier, is the only place that one can gamble in the entire country of China, a billion people there, so so a, a giant market. Um, Brendan Bussman, what, what's the uh, what's this pushing back of the deadline to the end of October going to accomplish? You think more people might uh, apply because of this delay? I think there's an opportunity for others that, that may show interest. You know, the, the problem is that the parameters didn't change. It just gave bidders, you know, basically an extra 60 days to, to figure out if they want to jump into this. but. You know, I think it was one of those that reiterated, hey, Chicago uh, is on the horizon and there's an opportunity here for those that are interested. But um, I don't know if I see many more than maybe one or two maybe jumping into that. And I really don't see anybody uh, that's already bowed out having a second thought. And Richard Vallada, you know, going back years, the debate over Chicago Casino was it could be used, the, the profits from it could be used to help uh, support public employee pensions, which are drastically underfunded. What's the best case scenario in terms of how much tax money could come in from a Chicago casino? Well, I think that because of the fact that there's so many uh, uh, market influences, uh, all these casinos in uh, Indiana and nearby, uh, and the ones that uh, Brendan mentioned earlier in terms of what could be coming to the market, it's kind of hard to say just exactly how much revenue could be generated, obviously, with a higher tax rate, you're hoping or wishing that you would get any more. But the fact is, is that uh, unless you have a really solid operator in there, it's not going to make much of a difference. So uh, I, I don't know what the, maybe Brenda knows the answer to this on, on how much is anticipated, but uh, that's a, a figure that I think is elusive Brent, at this point. Brendan, why don't you lay down the odds uh, of, of the city <laughs> actually getting uh, a couple bidders here and getting a project up and running? Well, you know, I think there's a lot that go into to setting the odds off of that. And I don't want to say that I, I'm, I'm weighing bets one way or another off of it. But uh, I think the city has to sit there and say who actually submits it again and sh at, at the end and shows up to the game. And I think at that point you figure out uh, if there's a horse there to, to play or not. But, uh, you know, I think there, there's a good opportunity here uh, to, to have somebody come in. I just don't know if they can meet all the thresholds that are there. All right, looks like we've exhausted all the gambling cliches in this discussion, so I will refrain from that. Uh, and our thanks to Richard Villada and Brendan Bussman. Thanks so much. Thank you.